We're getting really close to having the main engine back in brew pig, so the most logical thing we can do now is learn how to fiberglass and build a hot tub just like this. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. Take this out um, so that we've got clearance. We've got, they've taken the original one out on the other side, so I'm not too stressed about that. You're probably wondering why are they playing with plywood tanks when they really should be doing something more engine ish? Well, in order to get our new Cummins 855 fitted into Brewpeg, we have to get our holding tanks designed and built and fitted into the engine room before the engine. They're physically too big to go in once that engine is fitted. So this week, we've come up with a design that's dictated by the boat shape and then we're building tanks to suit. We've got some weird angles and some various things to accommodate. We built a template so we know our rough size and shape. So now it's time to start building the plywood box themselves. Before Bert can put the base of these tanks in, we've got to cut out this gusset just here. Now, normally I don't like cutting out gussets, but I'm not worried about this. It is a structural member of the boat, but it's welded to a big bulkhead there and a structural member here, which we're not modifying. So if you come back, take a sort of 30,000 foot view, you can see that there's massive strength in that back end of the boat. So by moving it, I'm not too stressed. And they've already hacked the other side out. So that's been like that for donkey's years and the boat hasn't sunk yet. Well, twice. You'll notice in this episode, we're going back in time a little bit. That's because over the last two to three months there's been multiple jobs happening. This is one of those jobs, getting the holding tanks in before the motor comes back. found using 3mm MDF just wasn't stiff enough and therefore accurate enough in order to get a good template. So we've gone back to just good old measuring, we're going to cut it out of the plywood and use that as our base. Okay so we've got 415, we've got 610, we'll go square down here. With the plywood base down, we found the easiest way was simply to measure out the various sides that we needed to cut. There's quite a few in this tank, it's a bit of a weird shape. So this here is building it up one wall at a time. To hold these walls together we're just using hot glue. We don't need any strength, we just need the thing to sort of stay together. So it's a really simple way for us to just glue everything together and then we're going to screw it tight later on. Once it's in position, put the level on it, hold it in a perfect level position and you only have to wait maybe a minute and that glue's set nice and steady and we can start moving on to the next wall. This is the first of the two tanks that we built, so we were sort of figuring out what was the easiest process, what was the best way to mock it all up and so on. Um, I've done a lot of this sort of thing when I was younger, probably 25, 30 years ago with my dad. Uh, and so a lot of it was just coming back from memory as to what, what worked back then and what's going to work in this case. So the back onto the second sheet of plywood, Burke's chopping out what's going to be one side.
this is us for the day. So we've got this end completed, and then we've got the wall at the back going around. We made a little bit of a whoopsie on that far end. It's a 45 degree piece of wood, and we kind of got the level at the top slightly off. So we've made basically another template using the original piece of wood that we cut, um, plus a bit of MDF. We're gonna chop it up tomorrow and get the right shape. We'll cut a new piece of that in the morning, and then that allows us to run the string line across the front which allows us to make these two panels here. So we're gonna have a dog leg sort of come back like that so we get a wee bit more capacity um, at the front. So we've got a dog leg at the back, you can see. It allows us clearance for things like ball valves that go on the fuel tanks. And we've got a dog leg on this front here because that allows us to bolt the tank onto the rib down here and then also clear the structural member at this side here. So given that we're a channel that mucks around building things out of metal every day, why on earth are we building these tanks out of plywood and fiberglass? If we were to build these tanks out of any sort of metal, so mild steel, stainless or aluminium, they all have pros and cons. Aluminium and stainless don't need to be painted, but they're um, not able to withstand the acid that is in urine. Mild steel needs to be painted and therefore can, um, can be a tank that you can use as a black water tank. However, if the paint layer that you put in there breaks down, the metal immediately starts to um, rust and falls apart and essentially you end up with a short term solution. You can do things like build a tank and put a bladder inside, um, but if that bladder ruptures, you've got exactly the same problem all over again, and then you've also got a big bladder in the middle of the mix to fix. A common solution is using plastic tanks. This is an absolutely fantastic solution if you can do it. <laughs> this is the last time we get anything out of it. That was gross. <laughs> like that paste. Yeah, that was not what I was after, really. Oh, cool. I was going to say, let's start drawing the top up. It's a bit better. Plastic tanks in the shape that we need were about two and a half thousand each. So the next solution that we have was building our own out of fiberglass. Now there's a couple of ways you can do it. Essentially you can build them out of straight glass if you have a mould. You can use a foam core and then build glass on either side of that foam. Well in our case we want to manage costs as much as possible and weight doesn't really matter. So plywood covered with epoxy and glass on both sides is a fantastic option. You always want to have your welding gun pointing up slightly. <laughs> Right, what's the plan here? You got the top drawn up? Yep, do we need more? Yeah. Just want to glue it up. We're going to do a template in two pieces so that we can get it out the door. Um, but then we can lay it all out exactly on the shape we want. And then it'll be cut perfect, essentially. Can you line that one up? Get it corner to corner, absolutely spot on. Okay, yep. happy there. There you go for your life. Is that back one there good? Yep. What I'm thinking is we'll split it here. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll yeah, just yeah. link them up. Or do this way? We need to get back that way. Yeah, yeah better. Too far or? Slightly, yeah. Okay. Just about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good there. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's not as far off at the front as I thought. So, next tank. Beck has been getting the timber and everything ready. He's been bolting down the um, tanks, the, the new holding tanks. We've made a, a bolting mechanism at the front. So he's fastening those down, he's just finished that basically, and now it's time to start building the walls of the second tank. Where did you get up to? Nice. He's a man of few words and one diagram. Had this measurement at 1250 rather than 1205. That was a problem.
The second tank was coming along nicely. We nearly had the sides complete. I was downstairs cutting out some plywood to make the last side. And while that was happening, Beck was upstairs in the engine room fitting up a template so that we can cut the exact shape needed on the plywood that's going to become the lid. I've been running knees, looking for sunset, digging deep since 99. What I thought was gone was sitting in my pocket in plain sight all along. I think it's time for me to go burn on. So now that we've got the lid cut for both of them and we've got both tanks pretty much assembled as they need to go we need to do some trimming so you can see it doesn't quite fit we've got to trim at the far end we've got to get it level and so on this one here there's a slight tip forward on the lid compared to that one so all of that's going to be trimmed up we're going to do that outside so that we don't get stuff throughout the engine room but what we are going to do originally i was thinking of fiberglassing the inside of the tank in the engine room and then taking the whole tank out of the engine room and fiberglassing the outside we're not going to do that because jess is too reactive to the fiberglass so we've got these here we're going to screw the absolute bejesus of the of these tanks together on the outside take them outside and then glass everything outside so we don't have to do any of the smells epoxy smells and so on inside the boat thank you for keeping me safe guys started fitting these brackets to the outside and then we realized we couldn't get to the back walls of these tanks so we pulled the lid off and then started fitting them on the inside as well so that we'd have lots of support on that back wall basically what we're trying to avoid here is when we lift these tanks out we don't want the walls to move because we need to fiberglass them when they're outside of the boat so therefore they have to maintain whatever shape they have right now when we pull them out of the boat Is this the famous German sense of humor I've been talking Sellotape holding it down. Love your work. Well, 
although these tanks are quite large they're not physically heavy they're just incredibly awkward however in saying all of that if we don't get them in and out now and get this work finished we'll never get them in once the motor's here when you see them come up through this hatch this hatch is three meters wide by one meter deep and it'll give you an idea of how big these tanks are started screwing the top down and then realized that we didn't have enough support on the inside so when we pick it up it's probably all going to fall apart so we're taking the lid back off we're going to put a lot more of these braces on the inside um, just to strap it all together and then we'll take this one outside that's substantially more stiffer and stronger now so i reckon we can pull it out without it flopping apart With both tanks out, it's time to close up the trapdoor in the middle of the saloon. Sometimes Jess doesn't make it onto the camera as much because she's not, you know, smashing grinders around and, you know, whacking hammers and so on. But what she does in the background is pretty much keep everything running and a lot of it happens off the camera and therefore it's really hard to show how much of an impact she has on the channel. Right now it's absolutely stinking hot and me and Bjerk have been in and out of the engine room ripping these tanks apart, getting them downstairs and so on and we are absolutely stuffed. But that's nothing compared to what Jess is going through right now. She's got a hell of a migraine. Um, she's like absolutely shattered. It's right up to the deadline for editing. She's still editing even though she has this hell of a migraine going on. And on top of all of that, we didn't expect it but she went and made lunch for us as well. It just kind of gives you an, an inkling into how unbelievably strong she is as a leader on this project. That's what happens when she starts editing with migraines. <laughs> just constant mm -hmm. flows of ice packs and hot waters and things to try and keep her... Like, I know everyone will tell me ice packs are the wrong thing but they work for me so... They do, they work Leave awesome. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I remember editing for a year and a half with just a constant migraine every day. But I had the pain and the aura one where you can't see anything. And I just had to keep going. Yeah. And at least this is just every, every now and again now. I'm so grateful for that. But today is the day where I wish I didn't have a migraine. Then Bjerk have been pushing really hard to get the lounge back together today. Um, plywood smell and the dust and so on from plywood is one of the things that gives her a migraine and like sets her allergies off going crazy. So um, the tanks are kind of secondary. We got them out of the engine room so that we could basically seal this hole back up that's in the middle of the, the saloon, the lounge. Um, and then BX also downstairs hosing out the engine room to get rid of any dust in there. Thanks for working so hard to keep me safe, guys. This is a good example, right? We're cleaning the bilge. The bottom of the bilge under the engine is draining quite well, but where the gen set's going is drains like a bag of rocks. It's just absolute garbage. There's all of these sort of brackets and things and drill bits and whatever else, but it collects junk everywhere. And then you've got things like over here, tiny, tiny little drain hole. So what the plan is, um, up here we've got to modify as well. We're going to get stuck into it now that the tanks are out. We're going to be cutting this sort of thing out. We're going to be cleaning it up and cutting out bigger drain holes over the back there, as well as a couple of holes here, some bigger holes rather than just a couple of random holes, etc. on this bulkhead here we're going to be basically making them bigger and drain better so that we can get this area really clean all the time. Plan is this morning, lid off this one, get it to this stage. We're going to go around and glass everything so you can sort of see there's a few gaps. You look down like that you can see daylight through some of these gaps. 
doesn't really matter this is all going to be glassed up this think of this basically as a mold for the fiberglass that's eventually going to be the tank um, we'll leave the plywood on there but it really doesn't matter it's just to get the shape these um, structural thingies that we've got holding it together internally they all have to come out before we can start fiberglassing but this morning we need to just get the wood soaked with epoxy a trick that I was told years ago when you're doing like fiberglassing and things with, with timber and plywood especially is you can't just have dry plywood and then go and stick your fiberglass straight on top and try and soak it with resin because the wood will absorb the resin and suck it out of the fiberglass. So you want to lay as much resin as you can. Epoxy, not necessarily polyester. You can use polyester but it's not as good. Epoxy, the, the wood as much as you can until it's soaked up. Everything that it will take and it sort of stays as like a liquid on top of the wood. Might take two or three coats to actually get it to that stage. Once you're at that stage, then you can start putting your epoxy and your fiberglass together as your next layer. If you just put the epoxy and fiberglass together and put it on the ply, the fiberglass will um, lose its epoxy content. The plywood would suck it out and then you'll end up with a dry laminate and it'll delaminate on you. So there's no structural strength when you have a dry laminate. That's why you've always got to soak your epoxy into your timber first. But that's next week. <laughs>